Good evening. It's 7.30. It's Monday night. You don't want to be watching Boris Johnson. You don't want to be watching Leicester Fan TV. We've got Pontus Kamark joining us very, very shortly. So get your questions in ready for Pontus. If you're watching, we are streaming live tonight on Facebook, on the Facebook group as well, and on YouTube and Twitter and Periscope. So wherever you are watching, welcome to the show. Get your questions ready for Pontus Kamark. Yes, good evening. Thanks for watching. It is 7.30, so it's time to have another ex-Leicester City legend on the show. We've got Pontus Gamark, who was with us for about four odd years, four of some of the best years of Leicester's history from 95 to 99. Um, get your questions in. We can put them on screen as ever. Um, Lewis Scott, thanks for watching. Danny Wallin, get your questions in. What would you like to ask Pontus? Auntie Karen Kerner. Karen is watching. Sorry, Auntie Karen, how are you? Uh, Matty Bond is watching again. How are you? I told you, you're right, Matty. It is more interesting than Boris Johnson. We'll try and stick to one thing. Uh, Michael Geddes, good evening. Uh, Andy Medhurst, come on, Andy. I know you've always got loads and loads of questions, so get them in. But before we carry on too much, let's bring in Jamie to introduce Pontus Kamart. Doesn't Again, doesn't need much of an introduction, does he? No, he don't. He definitely don't need no introduction whatsoever, but we've got to give him a little bit just just to get him ready for us. Right, Pontus, he came from, uh, sorry, Pontus came, up, came from uh, IFK Gothenburg in September of 95 uh, for 840,000. I, I thought it was more than that, but uh, it was 840,000. Mark McGee signed him. He played 77 games for us. He left in July of 99. He played the first two games. In that second game, he had a really bad knee injury. And then he came back from that, he broke his arm, and then he was the, the man of the match, well, in my opinion, man of the match against Borough in 97 in the cup final. And we all know what he did then. So I think we'd better get him in and start grilling him questions about Leicester. Pontus, can you hear us? I can, yes. How Thank are you, you Pontus? How are you? I'm good. Glad you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining us, Pontus. Where where are you? are you? Are you in England? Are you in Sweden? Just talk us through how lockdown is or non-lockdown for you. We're not very locked down. Obviously, the virus is everywhere and we have to be cautious. But uh, I'm in Gothenburg on the West Coast. Stockholm is the region that had uh, the most breakout. So um, yeah, I can still go to the gym, uh, etc. You know, I still work. Uh, we, schools has, has stayed open and everything, but uh, of course not everything. Uh, we're not allowed uh, gatherings with more than 50 people, etc. So restaurants are struggling, event places are struggling, but the rest of the society is, 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 yeah, is trying to strive through this, you know, so, but not much sports either, unfortunately. Oh, well, as long as you're keeping safe, Pontus. Jamie, do you sure. want to kick us off with the first question? Yeah, I'll start, I'll start. Right, Francis, how did Mark McGee persuade you to come to Leicester? Because you were in the top division uh, in Sweden, but Leicester were in the, yeah. the second division, the championship. So how did he persuade you to, uh, to come? Well, um, it was through my agents, actually. And, and uh, as you know, Sweden has a very long history with English football. I, I actually think that we have broadcasted English football longer than England. We had a celeb we celebrated last year on my TV station 50 year of live coverage of uh, the the, well, well, the Premiership or the First Division. So so every Swedish football interested person has an English favorite team, I would say, especially in the older era. And and then you might support your local, you know, your home team as well. But yeah, we're following it. So. Because of the because of that and and the, the open game, you know the character of the game, it's it's always attractive to foreign. People. Obviously now with the money and everything, but it's always been attractive to to Swedish player to to come over to England because it's it's the it's the home of football. You know the Wembley Stadium, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah, it's um, it was a chance for me to to come out of the. Of Sweden, I played in the World Cup national team, won Swedish championships five times, two 
Champions League, etc. So it was a great opportunity for an advan- adventure. So, yeah, and I'm glad it was Leicester afterwards, anyway, because it's a, it's a great club, and I'm very honoured to to have been there. Uh, Pontus, I'm going to add in a couple of more Leicester fans who want to chat. I've got Tom Lee as well, uh, and we've also got Soren, who's a fellow Swede. Yeah. Soren, <laughs> welcome yeah, to the yeah. show. Tom, can yeah. I start with you with your question, Tom? Yes, Pontus. Uh, when you came to Leicester, a uh, youngish lad, mm-hmm. what's it like as a, a foreign player coming into the English game and getting used to it? Because we see a lot of foreign players come in and never seem to adapt to the Premiership or the Championship. Uh, you seem to come in and adapt it very quickly and get you know on with it. Was it hard to transition into the game, into the English league? Well, it is a little bit higher pace. It is more physical, or was maybe I should say. The, the game has changed a little bit. But I think the Scandinavian players has no problem with the culture and the language. So it's more about adopting to, to the game. And since I used to play ice hockey when I was younger... You know the physical side of it. You know, you know. I don't have any problems with it. You know, I like it. You know. Yeah, get in there. You know, as a defender as well. You know, when you can get in there with the with the tackling, uh, etc. You know, and uh, I was I was quite quick, good against one against one. So for that aspect, uh, English football is quite open, and and uh, I think it suited my 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 playing ability. And Soren, um, obviously, you you run uh, Blue Army Sweden. And uh, like Pontus was saying, you've been a Leicester fan for a long time, long, long time, Soren. What would you like to uh, ask Pontus? Yes, I've been a Leicester fan since 1969. Uh, so I've been a Leicester fan for over 50 years now. And uh, my question for Pontus is... Uh, it's inevitable, but uh, I'm going to ask you the question about that guy that you have in your pocket. Uh, <laughs> you so, see, I was, <laughs> I, was so, uh, to say, I was just about to say, Jamie, how much did we pay for Pontus? <laughs> uh, 840,000. 840,000. Yeah. Having a World Cup winner in his pocket, surely that boosted your yeah. price up. So everyone obviously <laughs> know that um, you were marking out your in the League Cup 1997. And the old souls face players like uh, Cantona, Beckham, Bergkamp and Overmars. But what I want to ask you is, uh, who is the toughest opponent you've met in any Ooh. league or international game? Mm. Any, any guesses? Mm. That's tough. No. There's been, a, there's been a few, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, mm. My guess would be Romario. Um, uh, you know, I played Romario. And... That could have been Romario, but it's not actually. You have to think harder. It's Emil a fellow, uh... <laughs> Actually, you're not far off. I mean, Emil, oh. well, he's a friend of mine, but he's, I mean, he is so strong and talented oh, that actually he's, pe- he's much better than what people, some people, uh, think of him, you know. He was such a great talent, but he was so suffering for 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 the for the team. He was working so much for the whole team that he could could have done much better by himself sometimes, you know. But uh, no, my the, the hardest player was uh, was actually Marco van Basten. No, oh, yeah. oh wow! Yeah. What, and the what? reason for that. Yeah, when he was at AC Milan, and the reason for that, I would say, because he's also a team player. I mean, he's he's a tall, he's a strong guy, but uh, he's still as quick, a little bit, I would compare him to Michael Jordan, who they say was like, he was too quick for the tall guys and too 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 tall for the small, quick guys. And the same with, with um, uh, Marco van Basten was that he was, really strong but also very quick and was also a team player you know and he was you know was you know so much bigger and physical and the same time with the same speed you know so and the finishes he had you know so i think he's probably overall the best player that I come against but like you said i mean with players like romario with different kind of, of style or you know there would been so many good players during the years but 
I would, and especially when Milan was so good at that era as well with Rijkaard, Van Basten, Hullit, you know, Papin, uh, and, the, and the whole Italian uh, with Maldini, Barres, uh, all of those guys, you know, they had a very strong team and we played in, in the Champions League. So uh, we lost 4 nil away and Van Basten scored 4. So, I mean... <laughs> Maybe that has something to do with it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe Lee. Yeah, I've got a, uh, a question here that's a quite a good one from uh, YouTube, which was, uh, what was your relationship with Martin O'Neill like? That's from Frankie the Fox. It was it was quite good, to be honest. I mean, we called him a little bit. hope he doesn't call me back now. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, you know, because he could be really bad you know it could be really bad but that was really to squeeze the best out of the team i haven't met i think and and i and i say that honestly such a gentleman and a smart character uh, off the pitch you know uh, and as long as you did your best for the team and everything you know uh, i i think he's outstanding and i'm a little bit sorry that he's not around as much i know he had mm. ireland and you know, was at Villa, but he's a very talented manager, and and uh, and yeah, obviously the, the the problem at Nottingham Forest there when he came in, but uh, I, th- I think I think he's a really good manager, especially to keep uh, youngsters with too much cash or too much individual stars. I think he's he's brilliant because he's a strong character within himself, and he knows his football. Yeah, Tom. So I would say that my relationship is, is quite good. Yeah, I was going to say you, you play with some very good players at Leicester, uh, and you play. You know, you got to play with some very good defenders in Walsh, Elliot. Who was your yeah. best defensive partnership? You know, in that time at Leicester. Maybe, maybe you mentioned them. Actually, it's either Matty or Walsh, and I would say that because <laughs> if we're going to meet Duncan Ferguson. <laughs> I'm not going to go for the header. <laughs> yeah. I want somebody next to me to get in there and I can do the running, you know, I can take yeah. the ball. But uh, to get a body in there, even, even Tags, I mean, he he didn't fear anybody, you know. So Tags was also very physical, you know. But uh, Matty and, and Walsh obviously played a lot and they were they were not only physical, they were skillful and good leaders and everything. So, so I wanted a, a big tall guy next to me you know that could do that kind of uh, air work and i could do the the surface work yeah i've got uh, andy medhurst uh has asked you uh, who was the joker in the dressing room i usually ask this one but i'll let andy ask that one who was the well there was there was a few in that team i can assure you that (laughs) oh my god my funniest athletic years ever those four years you know it was crazy it was so many mad people in there but out of the mad probably the maddest would be parks yeah Gary everyone parks. says it everyone oh, parks yeah oh my god so uh, i would say him but yeah we had a lot of fun you know it was it was it was a crazy gang in, in a way but very good characters you know and out of the pitch you know sometimes i I couldn't understand how they could produce on the pitch the way they lived on the outside, you know, Neil <laughs> Lennon and all of those guys, you know. Was you it know, Pontus? Got arrested. Everywhere we go, they got arrested, you know. So. <laughs> Pontus, was it a bit of a culture shock coming over from Gothenburg to Leicester? Oh, it's not. Oh. Ah, uh, no. Oh. That was good as well. well. But I, it was obviously well, I was going to say Parker, wasn't it? Because I mean, yeah, yeah. now there's a, that's a few that say Gary Parker. That's everyone, everyone I, from that time. Yeah. Well, it was bonkers. I was playing with him on the uh, on the same gig that I played with Camark, Pontus Camark. Um, Parks was a bit crazy then. To be honest with you, I didn't know that was Gary Parker at the time because he changed so much. He don't look nothing like Gary Parker that I remember when I was a kid. So, but, I mean, yeah. I hope. Hopefully, Pontus is going to click back in and come back in. Uh, Soren, obviously, you come over and watch quite a few games from Sweden. Uh, have you, I assume you've met Pontus, haven't you? Uh, yes, I met him. You know, I met him in, in Stockholm. Uh, you know, that uh, uh, International Champions Cup. Uh, yeah, the Barcelona uh, game. Barcelona game, yeah. So, we had uh, he, he was there presenting the trophy. 
So we had we had a good chat. Pontus and uh, Jim Donnelly was there, and Jamie oh, Tamor Jim. from Leicester yeah. City. So uh, I sat down with all all of them, and we had a good chat, talking about the old times. Fantastic. Let's. Uh, I think Pontus yeah. is joining He's us there. back. Yeah, yeah. He is joining us. He's on the side. I don't know. Yeah. Still upside down. Yeah. <laughs> 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 paid. We'll all have to look like that. Yeah, yeah, you see the crazy gang. I don't know if uh, in there we go. Like there we go. There we go. Yeah. That's better. Yeah. Yes, well, you see, I start talking That's about brilliant. the crazy gang and everything just uh, so, <laughs> collapse, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just, I, I was going to ask. You, oh, oh, go on, go on, Jamie. Just, just similar kind yeah, of question. I still got the um, connection. You were. Mm. Well, I've, I've read when you came to Leicester, you were doing some kind of university language course. I think it was Arabic, wasn't it, when you came to Leicester? Mm. You were learning another language, yes? I think, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, well, that makes you quite... In oh, he's gone again. Uh, I think his Wi-Fi is playing up. And you're right about that. He was learning Arabic in, in uh, at the, the Montfort University, I think. And he, he was learning Arabic even when he was in Sweden. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he's quite an, quite an intellectual guy. Then I've got to ask him this question, though. I can't ask. I can't. He needs to answer this one. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> yeah, there's. I'm just gonna come on, pop, pop him out. He'll he'll join us back. Yeah. Um, so, so how are you guys coping at the minute? Because we're still waiting for the football to come back. Um, well, apparently, the news is it's coming back in June. Is that right? Yeah, I think that we could talk about that, uh, that it could be coming back from June the 1st. The government has said potentially it could do, isn't it? So let, uh, they've got to do it with safety, haven't they, though, guys? Oh, of course, oh, yeah, safety is paramount in this league. Testing's got to be done. Players have got to be checked to make sure they're fully percent, you know, fit and well. And last thing you want is one player to go out and play a game and then pass it to 22, 23 players and exactly. room staff and it goes completely pot. The FA have said, though, that today that the Premier League will not be voided. Whatever happens, the league will be finished somehow. Either the games being played by indoors or neutral venue, or by every points out between home and away games. So th th there will be a finished table. So teams that think like Brighton have come out, Villa, yeah. some of these other yeah. teams have said they, that uh, will play, but let's just come to relegation. Ain't going to happen. So we can write off this season. We'll be finished somehow. So you know, it's it's going to be good that it will get finished. Yeah, how are you all feeling as well about it being finished, Phil? Yourself, Jamie? I, I think for, for me, uh, Soren, it'd be interesting to get Soren's views as well because he doesn't come on very often. Soren, we've got to finish this season, haven't we? I, absolutely, absolutely, yes. In in uh, any way, uh, it shouldn't go, uh, as you say, in, into void. That would be terrible. At, at least, uh, especially for, uh, I mean, Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, back. The we've got back. Pontus back. You can finish your question off. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. It's a, I was just okay. trying to say, you did a... Simon's just said to me that you were doing a university course at De Montfort and learning Arabic. So you can speak quite a few languages. So you must have been one of the most intellectual at the club and one of the players. Well, who was at the bottom <laughs> of that list? Who was at the bottom <laughs> of the list? <laughs> that wasn't very difficult. <laughs> I could speak English. That made me most intelligent in the team. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I always... <laughs> no, but I've been reading a few languages. I did marketing at, at the Montfort, but uh, I took Arabic uh, on the side and I've been uh, doing a diploma for, for in Arabic, yeah. And um, I've done a few other languages. But it's different from over here, you know, because in Sweden you need an education so I took technical engineering degree in my home country so sport is not really you don't make that kind of money so you need you need your education for the rest of your life you know so I guess that's why uh, the primary school and the good university uh, and and you practice your your sport in the evening you know you still do your uh, stuff, you know, so you have an education because, like you say, you can't live on the money afterwards, so you still need it. So who, who was, oh, on. hold on, he hasn't quite answered that. Who was the least intelligent when you were there, when you were playing for Leicester? <laughs> Amy wants it. <laughs> Easy. Savage. <laughs> <laughs> Sad. Oh my God. I thought that might be the answer. A, a stupid blonde, you know, that's easy. 
<laughs> he hasn't changed. I can go now. That's all I need to know. Was, I can go. He, he was wearing the the yellow donkey shirt each week, you know. So, um, but, uh, for, for the worst training during the week, we had a, we had a, a vote, you know, that Gaffa or uh, um, Walla went around um, and asked all the other players who was the worst trainer for the week. And I think he, he won the championship each year, you know, uh, Robbie. So, <laughs> Perfect. Um, I've got a question for you. Pontus, in the current Leicester side, uh, who would you love to play alongside? Well, it's difficult to choose one because they have a great side. OK, Obviously, defensively, Paul... defensively. Go over defensively then. I like Ricardo. I think I think uh, that's a fantastic uh, right defender. I think he could play for Barcelona. Yeah. I think he's that good. I think he's uh, outstanding. But they're all good, to be honest, in the whole team. Madison, obviously, Vardy up front. Uh, extremely talented players, you know. So, uh, But I would go for uh, Ricardo Pereira if I had to choose one then. Yeah, Ricardo is linked with Barcelona, Juventus, PSG, oh, to name yeah. a few. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's got obviously he's injured at the moment, uh, working hard mm. to get fit. If you've seen his Instagram yeah. stories recently, he is working hard to get yeah. back. I don't know if he'll be back in June when the Premier League is meant to be starting back, no. but who knows? Let's hope so. Yeah. Pontus, we've got about mm. eight or nine minutes left of the show, and, and we we briefly touched on Janino and that game or those <laughs> pair of games. Uh, we can't we can't run out of time and not have asked you a bit about those games because it, mm. it was a man marking role, wasn't it? Very much so, and, and not not particularly the usual role you would have played. But I mean, it was probably most Leicester fans remember that was why we won the cup because of your pair of performances that those two games. Yeah, I mean Gaffar Martin, he had been using me on on various positions when I used to play against the ve- the best individual players in the other team, you know, like Overmars or whatever, uh, Dwight York, etc. So, but there was a different role because it was man marking. I mean, at halftime, did you know I was, I was in Leicester's dressing room, I was in Middlesbrough's dressing room for the half time. <laughs> Not many people know that. Because I was you were that close to, to him, yeah. I was that close. No, but it was almost like that, you know, I shouldn't even care where the ball was, just make sure when he gets the ball, you're there. So that's a little bit different role. But I think that was a good... I mean, it suited me quite well, one against one. And it's better to take... If you take him away and take me away to play 10 against 10, I think that's even up to opportunities. I think it was a smart move from Martin anyway. And he knew that I had strength in that... in 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 the one against one game, you know. So... Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. I like defending and I take it personally. I can let a person through, I can let the ball through, but not, not both at the same time. You know, that's just that's just the way it is. My yeah. memory of that season was that we, I think we played Burr in the league, didn't we? And Janino had caused yeah. quite a lot of trouble. Uh, yeah, he was a yeah. sensational player. Yep. Yeah, he was. He, he was uh, very light and very quick with his movements and good skill and, and he produced a lot of... And he, he thrashed us, like you said, in the league before. They had a couple of others with Emerson, uh, uh, the Silver Fox up front. Ravanelli, uh, yeah. Ravanelli, you know. Ravanelli, so what had, they, had, they had a decent squad, you know. But I think still he was the key man on the midfield to, to create and to produce, you know. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just happy that it went well, if you know what I mean. And... Uh, but I think it was a key moment that Martin told me to do that. So all credit to him. Uh, Soren, you were obviously you've been watching Leicester since 1969. So 1997 was the first first trophy you've seen us lift. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, actually, I started to support Leicester just after they had been playing the FA Cup final. Uh, was it against Manchester City in 69? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I, I became a fan in the... In the winter, in uh, December that, that year, so uh, I had to wait a long time for a trophy, and, e- it... and even a longer time for a Premier League trophy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Soren, was it, I'll let you ask uh, Pontus one more question. Was it a pleasure to see a fellow countryman, Soren, be massive part of that League Cup win? Oh yeah, it was. It really was. 
you know, the games were live on TV here in Sweden. And uh, obviously, Pontus was, uh, I mean, we really like, we Swedes really like to have an Englishman in, a uh, Swedish man, I mean, a Swedish guy in uh, Leicester City. So uh, it was, was a really great thing here in Sweden. So uh, if I could ask Pontus one more question. Yes. It would, it would be a question... Uh, a more a more question of uh, today. Do you think that uh, this guy Coutinho will come to Leicester? Ooh, Coutinho. <laughs> Ooh, Coutinho. Oh. Well, I think that he before he he wouldn't think about it. I think because uh, but now when Leicester have done so well, so maybe it's a club that could attract a player like that. But I don't know if it's good or bad for Leicester to start bringing bringing in. <laughs> you know, already, you know, it's better to find those players that you produce and yeah. to get the wage structure, you know, the big stars and everything. The team effort has been so good. The balance in characters in in that, you know, it's, of course, it's a talent that he's a brilliant player, but it can also, you know, it's it's still a risk that he can change the structure of, of Leicester or take it to the next step you know but i think it's a risk as well you know so i think you have to have that in mind with the players like that so when you were playing uh at leicester pontus it was almost uh the same like it is now was it like uh yeah it was like a team definitely it was yeah on and off the pitch you know i still have more genuine friends from my forward leicester than i had from all of my football days over here, you know, so uh, we were so glued together, you know, like uh, you asked me before, I know it's short of time, but the difference in, in culture. And when I got over, I got over in November, de December as well to, to Leicester. And uh, I know I was coming in for one of the few uh, first trainings and they said, we're going a fancy dress, you know, like a Christmas party. And they, okay. So they say, <laughs> are you coming? Yeah, of course I come. Okay. So, we're going to gather around 11. And I thought, 11? Isn't that a little bit too late in the evening to start at 11? <laughs> but it was obviously 11 in the morning. <laughs> My God. <laughs> so, yeah. That's, so, that's Walsh and Taggart for you. Oh, 11. My, oh, my God. Oh, my God. No, it was... <laughs> no, I had... They were... They were really good characters. Really good characters. You know, like you said, individually, it would be more difficult. But... Uh, as a team, you know, we, we, we use the skill and we, we definitely work for each other and, um, and for the team. So I really enjoyed it. Uh, Chris Baker, talking of drinking, Chris Baker asks, what was your favourite <laughs> pub in Leicester back in the days then, Pontus? <laughs> the Brannigans. Brannigans. <laughs> we, we used to go down there, yes. Sorry, I'm not, old, I'm not old enough for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, Steve, I, yeah. Are you all, all the players? I, I, had, I had my leaving. I had my leaving do at the Brannigans, you know. So uh, that was brilliant. I remember being a fan and being in Brannigans when all the Leicester players, all you lot, came in Pontus. You all went upstairs <laughs> to the VIP area. You're showing your age now, lads. I don't know where Brannigans <laughs> is. I don't even know where Brannigans <laughs> is. We'll, we won't tell any stories from Brannigans, though, because nothing ever happened there. Yeah. Where was Brannigans? What is it now? Nothing. It's brilliant. It's down the bottom of Churchgate. Yeah, it's, okay. yeah, it's not there anymore. Uh, Tom, have it's you got one, now, isn't it? one last question? Uh, yeah, just mainly, what are you up to now, Pontus? I know you do some TV. Is that mainly where you're concentrating on? Or would you like to go into coaching and management? Or that's something you've not really thought about? I am... Uh, actually, I, I run two businesses in my hometown, but on the weekends I work for, for now it's Viasat. So I've been working with football and television for 20 years now, since the uh, year 2000. So um, hopefully it starts again. So obviously we have the Champions League, we have the Premier League. Uh, we, we used to have almost all the leagues, but we still have those which are the most interesting ones. And the Premiership we signed for another, another five years. So... So yeah, hopefully I'll be around there. You know, it's, it's a good way to keep in contact. I haven't really, I do a little bit of coaching, but as for my son's team, you know, he's, he's 11, you know, and um, I keep it with the television and I, I'd rather do my own trainings during the week and my, my work. So, 
So no, no top team coaching the way it looks at the minute anyway. Uh, Lee, sorry, do you, have you got the final question for us? Well, uh, the thing is, is that obviously the Premier League might be returning in June. So the usual question it, uh, that we normally do on this is, um, how would you wrap up the season? But it looks like it's returning. So I don't know what, how you want to finish the show now, Phil. Well, yeah, Pontus, what what do you think about the end of the season in the Premier League? How How would you? Do you think it has to be finished off? Well, I hope they play. I mean, because it's from the sports side of it, you know. To but that other aspect to play without crowd. I mean, it it will even be boring to watch it on. Not boring, but it will not be the same to watch it on telly. But I, I still think it should end on the pitch. And if you look at Leicester, I think they've done tremendous well. I mean, if they come third, who would have thought that? Another team can... It's only because Leicester won a few years ago that the expectations are a little bit higher. But it's an ex, outstanding season to be in the top four and to competing for the second spot. I mean, with the club size, the money size, I mean, that is tremendous from Leicester. So I just hope they can continue build. And uh, yeah, it's a great club, great people. You know, I'm just happy for the, for the fans and, and, and people around it and hope that Leicester do great for many years to come. Pontus, you were just one final question from me. Is you you were part of probably the best other Leicester side that there ever was, really? Yeah. That little period for three or four the, years. The pub team, you, the best pub team, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah <laughs> probably. Um, we, obviously, one of the seasons we we're finishing around ninth and tenth. Did you go into one yeah. of those seasons thinking, do you know what, we could challenge for this top six spot or not? <laughs> Not really. I, I don't think we were there as, as a whole group of players. Um, we were, I mean, Man U and Arsenal were really, really strong at that time and could bring in. Remember also, this was before the Bosman case or just around the Bosman case. So they could bring in like the two, three, four best outside players in the world. And they still had the rest of the national team in England, etc. So it, it was difficult to, to compete uh, with them at, at that stage. So, but so I think we were eight at, 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 the, at the best and maybe and everybody thought that we would get relegated. So mm. for that sake, we did quite well for a couple of years and we, we were there upsetting a few people during the Cups, etc. So if we could have continued that to build on for another couple of years, maybe we could have gone up a little bit on the ladder but uh, at that stage maybe we were a, a middle team brilliant well i'd like to say thanks a lot from all of us pontus for joining us tonight it's been an absolute pleasure thank you very much thank you for joining well. us thank pontus thank cheers you. pontus Keep we safe. appreciate it thank, thank you cheers thank pontus thanks you to make it i'll well, that's it. You go on YouTube. Well, I'm not Swedish now. <laughs> just We're carry just on. Like... Just carry on, yeah. Hurdy, 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 hurdy. I didn't do that one. I was going to do it, but I thought, no, it's too. I'll get told. I'll show you. Brilliant. Thanks, All right. Thanks Cheers, so Pontus. much, Pontus. Thank you. We'll let you go. I appreciate it. Brilliant. Take care, mate. And thanks, Soren, as well, joining us all the way over from uh, <laughs> Sweden as well. Foxes never quit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, Cheers, Soren. Soren. Hopefully we'll see you back down at the King Power for a beer yeah. before the game yeah. again, Soren. Yeah. Hopefully. Fantastic. I'll let Soren go as well. Uh, Jamie, Lee, Tom, thanks again as ever. Cheers, yeah, are we just going to go now? Are we going to finish it off? Or are we not going to yep. quickly talk about the statue that's been planned? Because that's, oh, yes. ma that's massive news. Uh, go on then. It's fifteen. It's fifteen foot. Is it fifteen and a half foot statue um, of Vishai is planned? Uh, it's gone to the council. Uh, you, I think you can go on uh, directgov. Whatever it is, and click on forward slash Leicester. It will be there somewhere, uh, and you can say yes or no to it. I'm I'm obviously voting yes. So go and have a look. I'm Maybe voting should, yes. Maybe we should drop the link on the Leicester Fan TV page for people to Absolutely. have a look. We should do. Well. Yeah, it well deserved. We sh it yeah, should be there. Should have been there years. Oh, not years ago, but. Should have been sorted. It yeah. takes time to do these things, but it'll it be is. there. And it will do. Great. Jamie, who have we got uh, coming up next? On Wednesday night, we have got uh, Canadian international Ian Hume at 7 o'clock. Hume. So that's Wednesday night. And Hume. then on Saturday, Hume. Hume. Not quite the same as Hooth, but on no. Saturday, we've got Lee, Lee Peltier at 2 o'clock. 
Fantastic. Another so, Sven signing. Plenty <laughs> of action coming up here on this fan TV. Thanks, chaps. I'm going to let you go uh, while I wrap up. Thanks to Jamie Here's from all. the Foxes Arms. Thanks to Chappers. Good Cheers, night. Everyone. See and thanks to Tom, who's still wiping baby's bottoms, I believe. Definitely. Cheers, lads. See you later. Cheers, Tom. And thanks most of all for everybody who's been watching. We tried to get as many comments in and questions in as we could. Um, keep safe. See you on Wednesday when it is Ian Hume. Get your questions ready for Ian Hume. Uh, until then, my name's Phil. This is Leicester Fan TV. Thanks massively to Pontus Camart for joining us. Entertaining. The best pub team in the land. That's what he called them. I think they were a lot better than that. Anyway, see you all soon.